Hi friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I'm excited you're here with me today. It's almost the new year and the celebration promotion is gonna start January 5th along with the mini catalog. This stamp set here is the is a free stamp set with a $50 order beginning January 5th, 2023. I love this stamp set and it's one of the stamp sets I chose to use in my swap cards. Now I create swap cards to exchange with other demonstrators and I have to get those out in the mail prior to a certain date. So this swap card that I'm making today, I thought, you know what, I was kind of in the middle of designing it and making it and I thought I would come on and show you guys what I'm making and then also some tips on uh, mass producing cards. So let me show you everything I have going on here. What I've done is I've pulled every ink and stamp stamp that I need from the set. So I've got Cajun Craze with a little shadow image, pumpkin pie for the carrot, and then I have two leaf pieces for the carrot, granny apple green and soft sea foam. So I have those sitting out in front of me and I have the stamp that I'm using in the coordinating ink sitting right in front of it. So it's just really easy to grab and stamp. Then I've pre-cut my cardstock that I'm going to be doing my stamping on into two inch by five and a half inch pieces. And I've got enough of them here to complete all of my swaps and then leave me an extra one. And so really quick, I'll show you the image I'm stamping, but I wanted to just show you that I've got all of them cut and ready to go. So when I'm ready to do this portion of the card, I can just sit and mindlessly do my stamping. I don't have to think about any other aspect of the card at this particular juncture. All I have to do is sit and do my stamping. So this is pumpkin pie and then I'm using Cajun Craze to do this really cute little outline on the, it's actually creating a shadow is what it's doing. So that's, whoops. That's Cajun Craze, I just dropped it in my ink. I'll need to clean that up. And then I've got soft sea foam that I'm going to stamp one of the little leaves coming out of the top of the carrot. And then I've got Grant Apple Green to add another piece of the leaves coming out of the carrot. Okay, so there's that, that part is done. So now what I would do, I'm not gonna do this right now because we're filming a video, but what I would do is I would just sit here and I would stamp every single one of these and then I would collect them all up and I would set them aside and that piece of the swap card is finished. And this obviously applies to any sort of mass producing. Okay, the other thing I've got set up is I've cut all of my layers here that I need. This is a four by five and a half piece of basic white cardstock, and I've pre-cut it, it's ready to go. I have my whole stack. And then I've also created um, a whole stack of cardstock strips over on the side here. So I've got Cajun Craze, bring these down a little so you can see them. So I have Cajun Craze, I have Pumpkin Pie, Mango Melody, and Pale Papaya as my colors. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna use my ATG gun here. ATG guns are not sold by Stampin' Up, just so you're aware. I will link to this one below um, on Amazon. But these are what I use, this is what I use when I'm mass producing a card. Uh, because you can see how much adhesive I'm using here. It's an extreme amount of adhesive. And so when I'm mass producing, I use this. I really don't like using this in videos. I've talked about this before, only because it's so bulky. It's like all you see in the video when I'm using it. <laughs> so I try to keep it out of my videos, but it's, I wanted to show you like what I actually use when I am mass producing. It's a more affordable adhesive and everything, but it is really bulky. Okay, so then I'm just gonna take and line my first, I may have to get my head in the video here. 
I'm going to line my first strip of cardstock up with the top of this cardstock. And then I'm just going to start adding pieces of scraps, strips of cardstock all the way down. Now, this is just a really, really fun technique to create a really interesting, fun background. Um, you can alternate colors. You could keep them, you know, in a pattern, whatever your heart desires. I am going to go ahead and keep this one in a pattern. And I can see that this piece is not cut squarely. So I'm going to use something else just because it will make it better at the bottom. All right. So again, this is a portion of the card where I would sit and I would just do these, do this piece. Okay. So I would sit here and I would, now I've got all my carrots stamped and they're sitting aside. So now I'm going to sit and I'm going to mass produce this piece of the card. So the reason I do it this way, what I have found is this is what seems to be the fastest in mass producing. Um, I've been doing swap cards and mass production cards for a really long time. I've tried lots and lots and lots of different ways of doing it. And in my experience, the most efficient way is to prep all your pieces, then decorate or create all your pieces that you're going to create. So I've cut all my card stocks. I sat here and I cut all of these scraps down. They were all scraps in my scrap pile, but I had to still like kind of cut them down to a decent size. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, after that I was able, now I'm able to just sit and create this portion of the card. So, we're just continuing to repeat this pattern. And then whenever I end with something like this, I want to end so that it overlaps the, the uh, bottom. And then we can just kind of smush all that down. And then we're going to take our paper snips and go along the edge of the cardstock and just trim everything down to size. So we're just using that white piece as a guide. Oh, this one's coming apart, coming off. All right, so then we've got our finished piece here. It's really beautiful. Now I would sit again, like I said, like once I get done filming this video, I'm going to sit and I'm just going to create all of these and then I'll set all of those aside and then they'll be in a nice big pile and any of my scraps left over that are long enough for me to reuse across a four inch piece, I'm just measuring that one, I'm going to put back in the scrap pile and the rest of these will go in the rubbish, the rubbish bin. Okay. So now we're going to pretend we have all of these done. So the next thing that I need to do is I have several pieces of um, pale papaya that are at this size, which is perfect. And then I'm going to cut them at four inches. So I'll sit here and cut as many of these as I need at four inches. And then I'm gonna bring, I have my basic border die because I'm gonna create a little element here. So my basic border die, I'm gonna go ahead and line it up just like this. Can grab my mini cutting machine. And so again, I'll just like turn something on my TV and I will sit here and die cut all of these elements that I need. I need 14 of them. So I would sit and I would just cut 14 of these. So we'll just die cut this really quick. Okay. And 
and then we would have 14 of these pieces die cut and ready to use. You could really actually, if you cut it down the middle, you could use both and you would only have to cut seven. So let's try that. All right, so now we're going, we're pretty much to the place of being able to assemble our card. So what we're gonna do is this piece is actually going to go onto the card base first. So we'll just adhere this onto the card base like so. And then we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this. Okay. And then we'll add this element And then the next step is going to be adding my twine. So this is from the Enjoy the Journey suite of products. This is comes in a three twine combo pack and this is Garden Green. And I think it's just such a really beautiful color, especially for what I'm about to use it for. It just, oh, it just sets this whole card off in my opinion kind of gives it exactly what it needs. All right, and then we're gonna glue this on. So if I, you know, wasn't filming a video, again, like I was saying, um, I would sit and tie all of my twine bows first. So they would just be a pile of these and then I would just be able to sit and assemble cards instead of having to like change over to each separate thing as I go. But I wanted to obviously put one whole card together with you so that you could see. But for the mass production piece of it, I would sit here and I would tie all of these bows and just have them sitting in a nice little pile or in a container so that I could just grab them out and glue them on. So then the other thing that I did is I sat and I heat embossed my sentiments. So rather than doing each little one, I just did them in a big long row. So now these are just completely ready to go and I don't have to think about it. So I just add a little glue right there. And again, I would cut them all down, have them all ready. So this is thanks. And then I need one that says a bunch. So put some adhesive, a little glue on this end. Thanks a bunch. And then for my last, um, Step, I have these really beautiful embellishments. These are the iridescent pastel gems and these just go fantastic with this card. And then we're going to, last step would be to add it. So obviously the way I would do this is I would Sit and make all these, sit and make all these, sit and do the bows, sit and die cut this, sit, obviously you've already seen, I've done all the sentiments. And then I would just have them all lined up, all the pieces and parts lined up in an assembly line and begin adhering them to my card bases. And we would just be able to throw these together fairly quickly. So then when we're all done, this is our finished card. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty and just such a fun, unique card. This is the other one I created. And on this one, you can see I used lots of varying widths of scraps and I did not do a repeating pattern. I just mixed it all up. So it's really whatever 
you want to do uh, whatever makes you happy but I really wanted to show you this card and I wanted to give you some tips for mass producing your own cards so if you're making invitations or birthday cards or whatever it is you're making hopefully those tips will help you and I'll try to remember to once I get all this ready to assemble I'll try to remember to take a picture and pop it at the end of the video here so you can see what it looks like when I'm ready to mass produce Thanks so much for tuning in and I will be back with you very soon with a live video. And don't forget January 5th is the start of celebration and the brand new mini January through April catalog. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.